I think we were all blown away when we saw that Say Amen led into This Is Gospel, which led into Emperor's New Clothes by Panic at the Disco. Well, the music videos tell a story, but what does the third part in the story say lyric-wise? That's what we're gonna be talking about on today's video. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel where we have lots of Panic at the Disco explanations that I guarantee you'll love. Stick around to the end of the video, you'll see a couple of them right here. There's more around here somewhere. But let's talk about Emperor's New Clothes today. Uh, I want to go ahead and say, first of all, that we do have a distinct story that leads from the first music video through to the third, and that's probably the subject of a future video, but the lyrics do not tell a clear story all the way through. They show a progression of Brendan's character and his personality, maybe, but at the same time, he's also kind of pulled a, a weird move in Emperor's New Clothes and he's not really being himself. Like he claims to be being a character. Is he really being a character? We might find out, we might not. Uh, but in Say Amen, he talks a lot about how he's just gonna do what he wants to do and not ask for forgiveness. In This Is Gospel, if you've watched my video, you know that he was talking about something that one of his friends was doing that was hurting him. And so he was kind of struggling with that and he shared the lyrics with his friend and his friend really appreciated that. But in Emperor's New Clothes, he's being, shall we say, braggadocious. He's claiming that he's great and awesome in a lot of ways. And in the music video, we kind of see this mirrored as he turns into like this powerful mini demon. Uh, and the, you know, big demon comes at the end. We're looking forward to the fourth music video in this series, I'm sure. Uh, and it, it just gets really crazy. But let's take a look more at what these lyrics say, and maybe that'll help shed light on where Brendan is taking Panic at the Disco. Now, of course, this album came out just a couple of years ago, Death of a Bachelor, with this song on it. Uh, and so he's changed and developed, and we're gonna see more of that with Pray for the Wicked. Uh, but let's see where he was. In the intro, we hear the line, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, which is a win-lose situation where one party wins and one party loses. And so we know from the very beginning that he's setting a tone for the fact that he's probably gonna be the winner in the situation he'll be singing about. In verse one, we hear, welcome to the end of eras. Ice has melted back to life, done my time and served my sentence. Dress me up and watch me die. He's turning into somebody else in this song and he's saying, I'm becoming somebody different. It was around this time that he became the only remaining original member of Panic! at the Disco. Basically, he is Panic! at the Disco at this point. He's the front man, he's the person we see all the time. So he was saying that like, I'm becoming somebody new, I'm doing my own thing, let's see where it goes. Um, and then he continues, if it feels good, tastes good, it must be mine. He's gonna take what he wants out of life and not ask for forgiveness, something that we hear in Say Amen. Uh, he continues, dynasty decapitated, the old ways are gone, the new ways, my ways are coming, he's saying. You just might see a ghost tonight, and that would be the dead old ways, <laughs> uh, showing up in his form, perhaps. Uh, and then in the chorus we hear, I'm taking back the crown. So maybe he felt like he was on top of the world for a while, then he wasn't, but now he's like, I'm gonna be back on top of the world. Cool. And then he continues, I'm all dressed up and naked. I see what's mine and take it. Now the line, I'm all dressed up and naked, refers to the title of the song, The Emperor's New Clothes. Essentially, Hans Christian Andersen was a fairy tale writer who wrote about this emperor who these like con men basically came to his kingdom and were like, you know what, we can create clothes that are so fine and so rich that only the, the best people can see them. Bad people, people who aren't even worthy to, you know, have you as their emperor won't be able to see them. And the king's like, or the emperor's like, I'm intrigued cool. And so they make him a pair of clothes or give him a sample and he can't see them. Instead of being like, uh, BS, there's nothing there. He gets kind of like scared that he'll look stupid or like not a very good person or somebody who's not fit to be emperor. And he pretends to see them. Uh, and then he, he like tells everybody else, can't you see them? They're so great. And everybody else is like, oh yes, of course I can see them too. I'm not a moron. Uh, and so he eventually gets his clothes made by these con men and he walks all around town wearing nothing because he's like, yeah, everybody should be able to see these invisible clothes, right? Uh, and then this kid comes out of the crowd and is like, why is the emperor naked? And it was like, nobody could be so pure and good as this child. And so everybody's kind of like, ah, I see. We we were all just uh, being BS there. And everybody gets kind of mad. <laughs> uh, and it's a story about how you shouldn't be vain and you should be honest. And uh, it's, yeah, it's a lot about pride and arrogance. And so Brandon Urie is leaning into that and he's saying, I'm all dressed up and naked and it's it's like him saying I'm I'm being open and vulnerable with people but I'm also wearing clothes 
and he's kind of leaning into that myth. He's really saying that, you know, what I'm saying in the song is a little bit vain and a little bit narcissistic, and I understand that. A lot of what he's saying in here makes him sound like he thinks he's some big shot. And to be fair, the lead singer of Panic! at the Disco is something of a big shot. Uh, but at the same time, he's kind of saying it's also partially still a lie at the same time. And it's almost as if though, like, third perspective Brendan is like looking at arrogant Brendan and saying, yo, calm down a little bit here. You're kind of acting like the emperor. Uh, but the song continues, I see what's mine and take it. The crown's so close I can taste it. He's going for gold. Then in verse two, psychophants on velvet sofas, life is good and rich and people are gathering around wanting to tell me how great I am. I am so much more than royal. Snatch your chain and mace your eyes. Uh, he says about these lyrics that he is not just the king of his kingdom, he's also a warrior for this kingdom and he's gonna fight for you know his kingdom and he's gonna beat up his enemies, things like that, woohoo. Um, and then he says, heroes always get remembered, but you know, legends never die. And I think he's kind of claiming here that he is a legend. He's not, you know, I'm not just satisfied with being a hero. I wanna be a legend. I wanna be bigger than a hero. I wanna be bigger than one person. I want people to, to look back and remember it as even bigger than it was. Uh, and for the legend to continue to grow with time. Uh, he continues on in the bridge. Mortal kings are ruling castles. Welcome to my world of fun. Liars settle into sockets, flip the switch and watch them run. And this is kind of going back to, it has a very Nightmare Before Christmas feel, this whole like melody in the section does. And so he's kind of saying like, I'm super powerful, I'm in control here, and like this is my place, and I can do whatever I want. And I'm going to mess with, you know, the people who displease me, and I'll bless the people who please me and all this good stuff. This is my world of fun where my rules go. Uh, and so that is the meaning of the lyrics to Emperor's New Clothes. Uh, it does seem to align with him sort of selling his soul for that demon key, becoming a demon himself, and now he has power that he didn't have before. Is Brendan in real life really selling his soul for something? Do the lyrics connect to that directly? I think he's playing more of a character here. I've seen Brendan, you know, maybe act in ways that suggest that he is kind of acknowledging the fact that he's on top of the world at the moment. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think he's quite so conceited as, as his lyrics go. And I think he is just playing a role and fleshing out a character or, you know, maybe like his arrogant version of a Slim Shady or a Blurry Face or something, except I don't think he thinks that this version of him is necessarily a bad thing. I think he thinks that it's just different, you know? And maybe something that isn't quite socially acceptable, but and then we get into Say Amen Saturday night and he's kind of like, you know what, I don't care. I'm gonna do whatever I want. I'm tired of hiding it. You know, this uh, this demon version I turned into, here's the, the origin story behind it. I chose it, I went for it, I sold my soul for the death key or whatever, and here we go. So guys, that's what I think this song is about. I hope that you enjoyed this explanation. Definitely feel free to comment down below with your ideas and a Panic! at the Disco song that I should explain next time. Check out these Panic! at the Disco songs. You'll love them, I promise. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all next time.